Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Prepare to be shaken and stared, no who's bar. With or without the lockdown, the conversation goes on. We'll be hooking up with Uche to get the download on WhatsApp information in this tech and information age in the midst of COVID-19. America is all for kicking out the foreign and embracing the traditional. It seems to be saying the gods are to blame. Chuka is an advocate for Nigerian healthcare system. Is he a lone voice crying out in the wilderness? Ekene says that such a thing as too close for comfort, and perhaps she had enough of the lockdown experience. I'll be setting things in motion by saying to my African leaders, copy and paste, just won't cut it. If you are watching this at home on lockdown, then I have good news for you. You are in the right place to be part of this big conversation after the break. The solution to the problems of Africa lies in Africa, but African leaders prepared to look inward for a solution to their problem. Your guess is as good as mine. African can't co conquer COVID-19 with copy and paste. That's my topic. Facing a fast-changing situation with great uncertainty and so many unknown, most governments around the world resorted to a similar approach to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, what I call the Chinese approach of lockdown. And as suspected, most African countries like Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, Rwanda, Kenya reacted quickly and decisively to curb the potential influx and spread of the COVID-19 virus by hurriedly copying and pasting the Western approach of a lockdown. But kudos must be given to the government of Tanzania for her unique approach to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. The president, John Magofoli, refused duplicating policies implemented in advanced countries as they have adopted a strategic approach that considers the best of its political economy and well-being of the society. With 32 COVID-19 confirmed cases, three deaths and five recoveries, Tanzania, unlike other African countries, did not lock down businesses and its citizens. The country did it also close its border, but initiated strict testing and 14 days compulsory quarantine to all arrivals. And to date, they are doing well. The World Bank has given multiple reasons why these copy and paste economic policies implemented in sub-Saharan Africa should be different from those adopted in Western countries and some middle-income countries. Firstly, informal employment in main, is the main source of employment in sub-Saharan Africa, accounting for 89.2% of all employment, according to the International Labor Organization report in 2018. Excluding agriculture, informal employment account for 76.8% of total employment, respectively. Informal, also, informal workers lack benefits such as health insurance, unemployment insurance, and paid leave. Most informal workers, particularly the self-employed, need to work day to day to earn a living and pay for their basic household needs. There are no social securities. A prolonged lockdown will put all of these at risk. Additionally, the majority of workers hired are in a precarious situation and most of these jobs are temporary and with low remuneration and do not offer social securities. And so these workers are at a greater risk of injury and ill health. Lastly, small and medium-sized enterprises, what we call SMEs, an important driver of growth in economic across the region, account for up to 90% of all businesses and represent 38% of the region's GDP. Access to finance is one of the main challenges facing SME in normal times, majority of them lacking the finance needed for growth, not to talk of a lockdown. 
So prior to COVID-19, the financial gap of SMEs in the region was estimated at $331 billion, according to International Finance Corporation report in 2018. Even after the negative economic impact of the COVID-19 outbreak, an interest rate is cut in several African countries in line with monetary policy action around the world. That will be unable to bounce Africa that is already lagging behind back to prevalence as a result of reduced labor supply for by the lockdown, followed by the weak monetary transmission in African countries because of underdevelopment in domestic financial market. I will therefore advocate that African leaders should adopt a homegrown strategy to combating the COVID-19 pandemic against the backdrop that African economies still need to design policy pathway to achieve sustainable growth, economic diversification, and inclus inclusiveness, especially given that economic sustainability of African countries depend on the ability to transform their depleting stock of wealth from natural resources into other reproducible capital assets, such as physical capital infrastructure and human capital. If we don't solve our problem with our African methodology, nobody will assist us. Yeah, I was speaking with a designer in Kenya, and she was pointing out the fact that now that the borders are closed, they can't import foreign. Yeah, so this is actually a positive thing because she knows that the people in Kenya like their own home fashion. But now the pressure is on to generate more. I know people are on lockdown, but they still want to wear good clothes. So actually, the challenge for them now is that they should rise to that, uh, do you say, the gap, to fill the gap. So I'm trying to just you know, latch on to what you were saying and say this is actually a positive development for a lot of people, especially Africa, because for, for the longest time we've been on the back end, we've been playing catch up. But now it's almost like everywhere has been put on pause. So we can reset, and, and I also take something that Emeka said in the previous last week's advocacy where he was sort of talking about, you know, it's about confidence building. People will yeah. invest in your market if they feel confident in it. So a lot of it now is resetting our own mindset to realize that we can stand on our own. We don't need to lean on what is said. We can now in, look at our, what we have in our hands because we don't need to look outside. Our borders are closed. Everyone's borders are closed. You can't go outside. What can we do with what we have? So we need to have people who are ready to think. We need a renaissance on thinking where you just start from, from scratch, almost like virgin thinking, and don't reference anything outside. Let's just take it that this is our own community. What can we do for ourselves, even if we have to go back to start again? And, and that's what we're looking for now, you know. Yeah, yeah but, but um, cool, cool. Um, can I come in? Yeah. Um, okay. okay, so yeah, can I, everything you said is actually correct. Um, everything you said is correct. Um, I Even like in places like America, where because of this uh, COVID-19, um, you know, the populace discovered that a lot of this manufacturing had been outsourced to China. Um, I think everybody needs to now get to a point where we should want to produce for ourselves because we don't want to be caught um, relying on another country to provide things that we desperately need. Like, look at the masks, look at the ventilat ventilators and all that. Um, and so I totally agree with you that, yes, this COVID-19 has definitely brought it home to people that, you know, it is time that we rely on ourselves. We, we should you know, make things ourselves, and we shouldn't really rely on anybody else. Um, I've heard rumors that once um, the American economy restarts, that the first thing they're going to do, or the main thing they're going to do is buy American. They're no longer going to buy uh, whatever else they were buying. They're all going to patronize American goods. So that's going to be their quickest way to rebuild their economy. I think it's something we certainly should be looking at. Interesting. Uh, we don't have infrastructure for anything, do we, really? <laughs> well, that's the point. <laughs> so how do we, what are we harnessing here without the right leadership? Um, because you have to have people who are ready to do what Uche is saying. They have to be ready to make Nigeria. It's, it's a mindset, and it's not, it, I, I don't think that mindset is, uh, is here yet and i know that I, I last in the last episode i talked about um about uh, you know the need to that we have to make a conscious effort to change and that's what which is saying really so are we going to change are we going to change our, our, our elected leaders and ourselves so that we we can actually make nigeria and buy nigeria and whatever else falls from there it's actually, yeah, actually that's simple. Uh, Emeka wants to come in. Tough. Um, you know, I 
talked about this uh, previously, uh, last episode. We, let's understand the nature of the beast here. Um, the nature of the beast we have flows from a, you know, a lack or a failure of imagination. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and that, that for me is really the, the where issue the here, starts, where the poverty yes. starts. Mm. Poverty, again, to re-echo what Chuka said, uh, what, what we're saying, it's in the mind. We have, uh, we have an attitude and a complex, which has become a complex, to see our limitations or the way we are as, lim as limiting. You know, yeah. and, and, and more willing to accept things that come from outside. outside. Yeah. And, and as those things, that, that they, they become the panacea to yes, a problem, to, to problem. a problem which is intrinsically different from, from, from that which is um, um, either, either Western. So, and so we have a mismatch. And so we, we're constantly trying to take medication or a system that's external and trying to feed it here and it's yeah. not working. Yeah, yeah. And that, oh. that creates a friction that we see uh, every day. So oh, we have to address it from uh, using local yes. systems. Oh, unfortunately, um, maybe we'll have to continue this advocacy, you know, yeah. in the next episode uh, so that we don't uh, copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like I said, copy and paste will not work where intellect and initiate, initiative are needed. After the break, Uche too has something to say about copy and paste and social media misinformation. Just wait for that. Our greatest enemy right now is not the coronavirus itself, it's fear, rumors, and stigma. And our greatest assets are facts, reason, and solidarity. WhatsApp, misinformation, and the coronavirus. As mass panic over the coronavirus grows, the popular social media app, WhatsApp, appears to be the main platform for the support and spread of misinformation. The messages that are either forwarded or copied and pasted, not forgetting the audio messages, often claim to be health advice from supposedly credible sources such as Stanford Hospital Board or from anonymous doctors who have the cure for the virus. Unfortunately, as, as countries around the world go into lockdown, WhatsApp and other such platforms become a lifeline and hotbed for pseudoscience that risks un undermining the efforts of governments and public health officials. We have been told via WhatsApp that blowing a hairdryer up one's nose can kill the virus, gargling vinegar, drinking warm water, or even eating bananas are cures for the virus, all of which have been debunked. This sort of misinformation is shared multiple times, and because WhatsApp is encrypted, unlike Facebook, it can't be vetted and blocked before sharing. We saw a similar thing during the Ebola outbreak when drinking salt water was pushed as a cure. My fear is that all this bad advice is being taken in and is often not vetted by the recipient and then acted upon as we often believe that if the solution sounds plausible, can protect one's family and is organic, then it's worth sharing. After all, what harm can it do? We don't stop to think that those behind the messages may be after money or clicks. WhatsApp has made some changes to prevent the spread of misinformation by limiting the number of times a message can be forwarded and by adding a forwarded label. However, we should check the facts online before sharing and engage directly with trusted and official sources for important information. This will go a long way to overcoming the menace of misinformation that may lead to very grave consequences. The bottom line is, you know, we need to vet the information we come across because it can do so much more harm than good. Um, and we need to look at the sources, where they came from. We should also take responsibility for misinformation if we do not verify um, the, you know, the materials that we come across before forwarding them. So it's just really, you know, how dangerous misinformation, especially around this coronavirus, um, you know, pandemic, um, 
can cause so much damage. So we just need to be very careful. So um, I think that was um, uh, your topic last week. Okay. And, uh, we talked about um, you know information management too. And now that almost everybody seems to be you know um, a journalist, and then some will ask you to verify because they don't want to fall short of uh, <laughs> peddling you know fake fake news. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but. Really, and that's why now, like I said before last week, I I I, I, I tend to stay away, you know, for now. And then I don't, I no longer forward information, except it is very necessary and verifiable, you know, from um, you know international platforms or organizations that I know and I go to confirm from their website, you know, then I can pass that information. But all of this other information flying around, oh, this happened in Agege, oh, share it so that it will reach those in authority, <laughs> you know. And I, I, I take exception to them uh, because there seems to be a lot of misinformation going around now. Yeah, and, 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 and just to and add to that, to um, is it misinformation well? or mischief? Mischief, yes, yes mischief. mischief. Mixed um, in with it. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I think, say yeah, I think it's more mischief. Mm. So f for me... No, sorry, quickly. Yeah. Like we also say, let's also put the, the pr blame where it is. In the absence of information, you yes. know, mischief makers are going to fill in the gap. Okay. And that's why government need to consistently you know, engage mischief. with information. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of mischief that a lot of people... Um, it's so easy to... A lot of people are still on the high of, of having access to, to mobile or to the internet. And they see these things almost as a joke or then on a high, and they they just they like the control. They like the power. Mm. You know, the, the feeling. Can you know, most people. people feel powerless in mm. their day-to-day -day existence. Mm. Yeah. And so suddenly to be able to to share information to to and influence just the influence react. the way people yeah. react. Um, so that's so there's a high level of mischief factor in terms of how people uh, misuse information or WhatsApp specifically and, and then push out this information. You you see that a lot. I mean, you know, like I said uh, previously, I've had to remove myself from certain groups um, because you find there people just um, just throw out any kind of information. And you ask them, do you, are you sure about these things? Eh, I, I, I just wanted you to see it first. Then. I, I'm, I'm verify. Like, yeah, I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, verify. Like you yeah. Yeah. You're not a child. Yes, I mean, you, 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 you went to school. You think. You, you think. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. that you think about it first before you share this information? So I think that that mischief factor is something. And then because there's hardly any consequence yet. Yes. Um, no, no, on, we're playing on, into yes. the hands of hate yes. speech bill. Yeah, but no, no. It's, I don't want to go it's, that it's way. Not a question of, it's not a question of mm. um, hate speech. Or fake news. Because I've talked about this before mm. when we talked about hate speech. Look, remember that in the or UK... social media bill. In the UK, for example, they have this thing where existing laws can adequately deal with this. I remember that UK diver, the young guy who was a swimming, a bit diving um, a young guy. Yeah. And people, he was vilified on social media because he, he, in the, during the London Olympics, he didn't do quite well. And there's a lot of people abusing him. And they use existing laws to deal with those, those people. Uh, yeah. yeah, there are libel oh, so, laws. So I've said you it don't before. need to have new sets of laws because at the end of the day, the fundamental will always apply. And the fundamental thing is that these things, whether it's online or offline, have real life consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so if someone is hurt, Sorry, someone's injured, in someone um, suffers some business uh, yeah. failure, so before you, there are you real call, life consequences. I, I wanted to just give you the legal, um, because there are sometimes big questions that have uh, followed you know, issues like this are, is okay, what if I am not the author of such information? I only forwarded the information. Okay. You know, under the same libel law, for the fact that I received it from you, I'm the one. You, all, you, are, you published it without verification. So okay. I will tend to sue the bigger pocket. If you are the bigger pocket, yeah. whether you are the author oh, or not, wow. so you are the one that, that spread then. it. That's why I just okay, wanted okay, to. Okay, no, I'm glad you said that because um, I was going to come in on that to say, actually, why I like Uche's advocacy is that I actually feel we can do something about it in, in terms of, it's almost like an evangelistic thing. Like what Emeka is doing, I do it as well. If people close to me bring that, now they've stopped, it's massively reduced because I do, a, I do a showdown with them. If somebody close to me starts bringing it, because it's almost like misery likes company. The same people that are peddling this nonsense, when you listen, they're so depressed because they've put themselves in a world where all this fake news is real. Mm -hmm. And then they come, when they call you, they, you know, and because they know I don't want to hear it. And my first thing is I don't watch anything. I don't listen to anything. I'm not interested. If it's not on the general you know, the platforms yeah. that are verified, I'm not interested. But you know, they then start saying, oh, but you know, and every time they want to make a sentence, they bring in. I said, where did you get that from? And usually it's WhatsApp. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, 
And I said, look, I'm not interested because the world they live in is so, they're haunted by that world and they want to drag you into it. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, the reason you, you like my piece and you're coming to me and you like the space I'm in is because I don't clog up my mind with this <laughs> kind of nonsense. So don't go and invite me to your own you know, party because I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. So I like it because on a daily basis, I'm doing my own version of putting people in their place. And so at least the people immediately around me, they've learned their lesson. I, you know, so at least I think I've done my job right. They've learned not to bring that nonsense near me because you know, so I'm not so much even after the mischievous people, because those ones, they can't help them. You're dealing with those who are soaking up this thing without processing it first, and then passing Sometimes it on. Sometimes you can't blame them also. Why? Why um, don't you blame yeah, them? That's what I said. I mean, I, I, wanted to, I want to come in on why you can't blame them in a, in, to an extent. For instance, with this, you know, people desperate for a cure, looking for ways to, to sort of combat this COVID-19. And, you know, they were hearing of vaccines and this and that. And it all seems so far away, these, uh, you know, cures or whatever they are supposed to be. Um, and then, you know, we as Africans, I know even with my, my colleagues in the studio, we have our own African remedies and what have you. And so anything that sounds organic and sounds like, ah, you can get these ingredients around your house and everything. And it seems like it's, it, you know, it actually makes sense. People want to, they want to afford it because maybe they're eager to um, be attributed um, that they found to kill or they're helping somebody survive this. So, you know, I'll tell you one thing that I'm saturated up to here now with is uh, people telling me what to do in, in order to make let, let, sure let that me, COVID does not destroy me. Also I've been to told add, I have to, 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 to steam my head five times a day, it, 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 I mean, Uche, two times a day Uche. for five days. I've been told all manner of things. So now I'm shutting it all down. I don't even want to know anymore. You yeah. know, too much information can be really too yeah. much. To, to add to what mm. you have just said, Somebody asked me, sorry, quickly, Chuka. Somebody asked me, said, yeah. there is no cure for this virus. But yet, every day, government is discharging 11 people, 6 people, 19 people. And it means there is a cure for it. That's an information gap that government had not taken advantage of. Even though some persons are yeah. recovering. Why are they recovering? More what, here what are you doing that is making them yes. recover? Okay. You know, so in the absence yeah. of when there's that gap, Others will say, oh, it's malaria. Forget, once you take malaria medicine, once you drink, I go. Because there is a gap. And so you won't blame people that would believe that misinformation because okay. you've mm -hmm. refused to fill that gap. Okay, fair enough. Chuka? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I, I wondered why they hadn't told us what they were doing. Because it's actually quite simple. Just tell the truth that when the cases are not that serious, it's really just about, you know, this tablet and this and that. And everybody will sort of feel better then we know that there are some that, well, they're going to die. And um, because that's what they've told us anyway. And so, you know, we'll be used to it. Um, but I think also, you know, don't forget that the reason why a lot of people just forward messages without thinking and all that is that I think that to listen to proper news is expensive. Because where are they going to listen to proper news? By paying DSTV so they can listen to, you know, um, uh, you know, even, even our own very own... Um, uh, plus TV Africa. <laughs> it's not cheap, you know. Can so I, if somebody's I, going to forward all sorts of things to yeah. you on Facebook and uh, all sorts of links, you just jump on them and forward them, you know. But if we had, you know, if we could sit and really listen to a lot of good stuff from good places, okay. we won't be doing this. Right. Or we'll be doing it less. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me say two, two things before we, we uh, round up this. Um, the first thing, though, is I agree with Chuka, uh, access to information is a matter of life and death. Yes. That, that's so true, especially yeah. in a digital space. But, but the other thing, though, with regards to the treatment protocol, um, why I think that the, the government or the health authorities have been very careful in, in, in saying exactly what the treatment protocol is, because we self-medicate a lot. Okay. And, this, yeah. and I think they're careful. There has to not, be a balance. Yeah, I, I agree. But they're be careful balance. that um, because you can get most of these drugs off, uh, you don't need Nigeria. And the way we get drugs is so free. So um, you saw what happened when Trump was pushing Chloroquine, chloroquine. chloroquine. And a lot of people yeah. said self-medicating, and you had a lot of um, chloroquine yeah, poisoning. Yeah, but they so have to I, be balanced. Yes, Every I agree. Day updates. But let's not push people into the direction of say these are the drugs, because a lot of people are going to kill themselves. Um, no, 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 this this the so, well, uh, Uche, at least you've tried to shine a light on an area of confusion, and, and that's been very helpful. Um, so after the break, I take to exposing what I consider to be some falsehoods 
um, that are holding us back. Pretty, pretty um, controversial, some would say, but um, here you go. Um, this is why we are the advocates. We can push boundaries a little bit. So, here you go. There's an innate affinity that comes with that which is homegrown. Um, foreign gods, religion and tradition, and, and a time for reflection. I, I, and, and let me start this with a caveat. I know that I'm going to say things that revolve around going back to our roots and I'm wearing it, a shirt and tie. So, but forgive me, uh, uh, some will call it wardrobe malfunction happened. But anyhow, as the world fights a deadly coronavirus, we have been witnesses to the equally worrying rhetoric of our religious leaders, some of our religious leaders, not all of them. Some of them are pushing every dangerous conspiracy theories that is out there about the pandemic being the result of some grand design by people like Bill Gates and 5G and his associates who take over the world and force humanity in some kind of uh, slavery. But I think it's time we really discuss how religion in Africa has become another hustle. No different from Yahoo Yahoo, 419 scams we hear of every day. So my advocacy this week pretty much centers on the need for a rediscovery of our, what I call our back to our African religion, which we appear to, at least on this continent, we've relied a lot over the last two, maybe 300 years on foreign gods, gods in Rome and Mecca, cathedrals in London, New York, Dubai, and Geneva. And by cathedrals, I mean shopping our monies, our monies in Switzerland, and so on and so forth. For the past 200 years, we have taken every road to vilify our own culture and traditional religion, calling them demonic, satanic, barbaric. Yet we worship the gods of those who have enslaved us, colonized us, and made us feel far inferior. And I think this is really the, what I talked about, about how we cannot design our own systems that profit us because we always look for things that come from abroad. When I think of it, I can see why the average black man will find it difficult to develop and come out of this cycle of dependence and subservience. So for me, we need to take a step back, at least, and stop vilifying our traditional religions for once. Um, let me get in here early enough, because um, sorry to say, Emeka, <laughs> but I think, Emeka, you have a bee in your bonnet to do with religion. I think it, it colors your judgment at times, in the sense that, to me, maybe I, I, you could say the same about me, but let me give you an example in a sort of objective, yeah. as, as objective as I can be. You mentioned at the start that you're wearing a shirt and tie. You reserve the right to pick and choose what aspects of life, whether you call it borrowed or foreign mm -hmm. or whatever, influence your life. That's your choice. That's how human beings Agreed, live. Yeah. yeah. So you don't need to vilify people who have opted to take believe in Jesus or believe in, you know, because you tend to focus on that. I'm coming, thing. let me land. But you, I'm not you vilifying those No, no, but you are, because saying. each time you no, advocate no, no, against that. I'm, I'm not vilifying. No, let let's come in, let me finish, let me finish. No, 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 Man. So allow people, live and let live. OK, I get your point towards the end, where you say, yes, maybe we took it a bit far. Some of these are movies. We, we tend to say throw stones at you, everything. Yes, you have a point. But it doesn't take away from the fact that if someone has believed on something, it's theirs. It's their own personal belief. And they're allowed to believe it, just like you are allowed to believe in a Madioha. Uh, uh, Follow uh, it through. Uh, can I, do you know where this problem started from? OK. Mm -hmm. It's not actually a mecca trying to vilify. It is the religion, the foreign religion, trying to vilify no, somebody who I does agree. not believe No, I agree that, that, but I'm trying religion. to say that. Yeah, that's why I said you shouldn't. No, 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 I, I did agree. Uh, if you notice, I flipped it. So I said, yes, I get it that it has started there. Just the same way his you have a right. to be pushing. As just the same no, way. Foreign, pushing. foreign gods I'm are the saying, problem to everything. I'm, saying, no. I'm not saying foreign gods are the problem. My point is this, that we've had over the past two, three hundred years, especially in the last 30, 40 years, with, 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 with this kind of Christianity that says that everything African, everything traditional is it's, evil. That's what I'm saying. That's that vilification. See, not exactly. that, not that. You it, won't it, find it, the local tradition is vilifying people who worship, yeah, people who go to church. It's, no. like, it's like you coming to my house It's the other now. way around. Imagine, even among, I, I, uh, I, 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 even yeah. among Christianity, somebody comes to me and says, um, are you a Christian? I said, yes. He said, are you saved? Um, I said, um, no, he says, uh, what denomination do you attend? I say, Catholic. He said, are you born again? Mm -hmm. Are you, 
You know, that's, and here you're talking about choice. Mm. Not to talk of when I now say, I ah, know I'm a, an Ogun worshiper. I says, oh, no, blood of Jesus. You know, as if, exactly. that's my choice. Exactly. <laughs> so, so you're preaching choice. Just the same way I'm wearing choice. this. Yes. The same way I'm wearing this. Yes. And I'm saying, that's why I started with a caveat. Mm. It's my choice. Mm. Okay, but the fact, but the fact is that it's all the the, the the thing is the other way around. Where there's this thing that people who are um, African or, or people who worship the old African religion, they're somehow evil. That's the yeah, point. And that's why you know no, my I, advocacy that's the point, also. But I'm not without basis. No, no, no. It's also that's it's also point. similar to my advocacy see. that. Africans should not just copy and paste everything from the West. Sometimes let's look inward. We can have solution to our problem internally. So this idea of, oh yes, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the moment I say um, uh, Ogun, no, you see now you're going or Alika, to where I challenged him. Or the Alika. fact that you choose to believe in Jesus doesn't mean it's not a truth for yes, you. Yes, it it's a truth that for not, that person. It's not, uh -huh. it's 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 not it doesn't mean it's borrowed fact, and it's copy and paste. The fact it's, that it's I yours. now choose mm -hmm. to also look inward, mm. the fact that I choose to look inward mm. and say, you know what, away with all this foreign religion, mm -hmm. let's look inward. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a choice. Well, no, 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 mm. I'm again, as long as you're, you're thorough with it, because what you find, a lot of people who allege that they're traditionalists, they cut, they cut, they cut both ways. They try and one day they're trying. The next minute they're calling on the name. But that's you, I've heard you say, oh, no. "Our Lord." But so you need even to make up the traditionalists. So, so, no, so no, let me say this. Okay, can I, that there is a can God. I come in? Mm. Yeah, can I say this? A God. Every, Chuka, every, you ready? every religion in yes. Can I come in? Yeah. Please join in. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the the white man came to vilify traditional religion. He came to destroy it and set about doing just that. He didn't give room for the traditional religion and his own. And what has happened is that we have taken on the battle of the white man. And that's why today we continue to vilify traditional religion yeah. and they don't vilify the white man's religion. Yes. It's a one way traffic thing. And you know, when you, when you find yourself doing something that and you're not aware you're doing it, you need to be knocked on the head and then all of a sudden you, you, you realize that, yes, that's what you're doing. What it is is that, you see, Ekene, people like you, maybe not necessarily you in particular, but people like you vilify traditional religion and, and don't realize that that's almost like your sole aim in propagating your own side of yeah. things. Yeah. So, yeah. The, you know, so... What you can, and let me that's really, what, that that's, that's really what it is. Uh, let, let me they, come yeah. But not I'm not saying you in particular. No, I said fine. people I'm like you. I'm happy with your trying to point the finger. Uche, go on. Yeah, well, you know what? I think most, well, depending on what religion you come from, yeah, you probably, most people end up vilifying the other religion. You know, yeah. I've seen Muslims vilify uh, um, Christianity. I've seen Christians vilify Muslims, mm -hmm. Hindu, whatever. I'm not really necessarily sure it's all down to, um, you know, people demonizing um, African traditional religion per se. Um, I, me personally, I'm kind of like free for all. If you find that your air, you know, the God you're looking for is in the African traditional uh, sphere, by all means go there. But like I kind of said, I do find that a lot of people that say they are in, in into traditional religion aren't really into it. They're taking the bits that you know suits, suits them, them the bits that that fit you know the narrative they want to push, and they're not really. Are they doing the rituals? Are they cutting chicken heads? What are they so doing? I want to know. Yeah. Because this is the let's, this end because so don't have let's, let's end it here. We'll but but we'll we'll visit it. Which we'll revisit this at another yeah, time. But yeah. let's let's yeah. be careful about using the word rituals in ascribing in ascribing methodology. That's also yes, really fine because okay, everything is about oh, mutual. Okay. We're ready for um, the next, um, next So anyhow, <laughs> um, so let's move on. Yes, we um, move. Well, we can only call it as we say it. So here's the opportunity to do the same because we are listening. On COVID-19 resolutions and chaos, Kings Lingwigwe says the only way out from the present Nigeria predicament, looking critically in Nigeria and the unending avalanche of pro problems bedeviling the country, you will agree with me that all is not well, except if you are a hypocrite. Well, well, what then is the solution to this malady, he asks. On COVID-19 and remembering the poor, James Subadi says in loud exclamation, he who fails to plan and has already planned 
has already planned to fail, he says. Over the years, Nigeria failed to plan. Now we have started to reap our abundant failures. On the complete edition, Osa's Awera says, my favorite show, never miss it. Great job as always. God bless Nigeria. Indeed, Osa's, glad you are engaged. God bless Nigeria indeed. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to Plus TV Africa, um, forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. So after the break, Chuka joins us and has more than little to say on behalf of our neglected healthcare sector. He probably speaks for a lot of us, if not all of us. There's no leapfrogging the requirement of laying the right foundation. My topic is BOSS and Nigeria's healthcare. In all the pleading for help from private citizens by the federal government in a bid to stem any wild transmission that would lead to a pandemic within Nigeria of the coronavirus, one is tempted to ask why in 60 years of existence, no government has found it fit to develop the health sector. For now, all hands should be on deck to assist, that much I know, but I still ask, why did it have to get to this? The Secretary of Government, Boss Mustafa, revealed that he, did, he does not know or did not know the level of rot in the health sector. How then did he get his job as chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and even stay at the job? How did Major General Buhari appoint such a man to that post and then make him the chair? Is the president not similarly oblivious of the state of our health care, having spent months at a time abroad whenever he requires treatment? The Sunday Times of London has written an article that aptly chronicles the penchant of African corrupt leaders for shopping sprees and medical treatment abroad. They poke serious fun at them and as they are now trapped in their countries in this time of COVID-19. Our very own Abba Kari, de facto number two in this government, apparently had to have his medical files transferred from doctors abroad after he tested positive for the virus recently enough. Suddenly, after 60 years of independence and years of banks surviving on Forex deals, they, along with their chief executives, as well as businessmen like Dangote, have forked out billions of Naira to help our situation. I say that these are strategic business moves by corporations who wrote to success on the back of correct, corrupt government dealing. We have to start to build good health centers, hospitals, and care homes. A difficult task now that Nigeria is broke. Where are our well-equipped sickle cell clinics, which need I have spoken about? What will happen to the isolation centers being hurriedly put up now? Will they remain and get better equipped as full-fledged healthcare institutions? What about pay for medical staff left to languish in poverty while members of our National Assembly live like kings? It's time to begin to rewrite our story and change our narrative. Let us even learn from our neighbors like Ghana. This week, Boss Mustafa, the Secretary to the Government, uh, said that he had absolutely no idea how that this was how bad our healthcare system was. And he chairs the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Uh, shocking that the president should uh, appoint such a man to such a job because he doesn't, he doesn't even know the state of the hospitals. How could he have been the one to talk about how we're going to deal with COVID-19? And even the president to have appointed such a man also does not know the state of healthcare. Anyway, he travels abroad every time he's ill. He can't now, he's trapped here. And um, you know that the Sunday Times was making fun of him and Abba Kari specifically. And Abba Kari had to ask for doctors abroad to send his papers because he has tested positive to the virus and uh, he can't leave Nigeria. Well, that's what we know. And, um, you know, it's so sad. And we've had 60 years to do to build hospitals and healthcare centers and all that. And uh, it's only now that all of a sudden, uh, some rich men who are 
effectively government contractors, because banks are government contractors anyway, um, have brought out so much money, uh, you know, just to, as it were, to glorify their own, um, their own um, uh, charity giving, if that's the way to put it. And all this does not, you know, go well for Nigeria. Um, with, well, you know, what are we going to do about all this? I mean, our neighbors are doing a lot more progressive things. Yeah. And we're still here, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, for, for me, it first and foremost, is sad and very shameful. Mm -hmm. uh, a display of irresponsibility um, when people who are supposed to be in charge of something do not even know, you know, uh, what it is. And then um, it is instructive at this stage to mention that these were the same people that uh, vilified the first lady when she said even the clinic in the, as in the, at the villa <laughs> does not have Panadol. <laughs> and so the chicken is gradually coming home My to friend. roost. So, and, and so now they are all admitting. Mm. And for the secretary to the government of the federation to come out publicly to say he didn't know that the, it was this bad, it means it is terribly bad. And about um, two weeks ago, I talked about um, the comparing some of um, the edifice you call, you know, EFCC office and um, the ICPC you office the, to the na national hospital, what we call national hospital. Hospitals. You, you, Specialists. Shameful. Specialist yeah. hospitals. You, you know, so now the government is saying we didn't know it was this bad. But the only my problem with all of this is not that he said he didn't know it was, after all, the government is an unaware government, mm. but <laughs> there is no plan to say, okay, well, this is what we are doing. Now that we know it is this bad, this is the plan we are rolling out. Even the president in his broadcast talked about um, how they are going to, they're setting up a team to look at the economy and stimulate the economy, you know, after all of this. There is no concrete plan to you say, okay, what? yes, now that we so know I, I, the health sector is bad, let, let, let me, let me this see. is what we're yeah, doing. I, and I agree with you totally. Um, and, and, and Chuka, thank you for, 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 for the advocacy on mm -hmm. this particular topic, because it's, it's so crucial. You, I don't know if any of you saw the, the leader of uh, UAE when he, when he tweeted something about in the 21st century, it's not the military weapons, it's not this, it's not, yeah. the, it's not the size of the, yes. it is the quality of your health care yes. um, that is really a driver in terms of how you measure progress yeah. and how you measure a country's um, power. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that in, the, in America's diminishing status from a healthcare where you see healthcare workers using garbage bags and you know, not having enough uh, PPEs. Um, and not talk about Nigeria, let's, let's, you know, even though we're talking about Nigeria. But uh, just to demonstrate that fact, that going forward, as the world gets more people, more population, Nigeria is growing, uh, people are living in more slums, healthcare should be seen as a strategic national yeah, yeah. issue yeah. and a measure of how strong a country, a country is. is. Let me in come terms in very quickly of, I think that's very the important. clock is ticking on us on this segment. Yeah. Um, just to quickly say that we need to just be looking at what can we do. And I think, I remember Libros once saying, you know, people who govern us shouldn't be allowed to go abroad for, yeah. and they, they should. So I think we need to, we are the ones to put that demand Let's on them. That, when the elections come, we say, look, we're not voting for anybody who has, doesn't meet these requirements. Number one, you can't go out to get health care. Number two, your children must be in, in school. It's us that are putting, we're not, we're not physically keeping them back, but we're saying you can't, you won't get our votes unless you tick these boxes. Because the only way the reality is going to dawn on them is if they're where we are, is if they're having to use that health. Then yeah, you see how quickly, pain. you see how quickly those people will I renovate agree. the school. Yeah. So we, we're not voting for anybody who is not using our healthcare system, using our schools, all those public facilities, we're not voting for you as good as an outsider. I think Uche is there. Yeah, Uche. Yeah. Um, just quickly, I mean, considering how, you know, the state we found ourselves in, that we're not ready, if this virus had really taken on a different, you know, outlook, we were definitely not ready. Um, it amazes me that even now, even though we have received a donation from the EU of about 50 million euros, I think it is, that the first thing we haven't thought to do is channel that into our hospitals and just 
you know, because that for me is the only way we can actually measure what we're doing with the monies that we're receiving. We've heard we've re received so much money, and yet nobody knows what the government is going to do with it. Well, I would have thought that they should take some of that and start showing us that they're improving some hospitals, they're upgrading some hospitals, or they're even building new ones. But, you know, right now, I really don't think anything's going to change as far as I'm concerned. They yeah. think that COVID is going to finish and they're going to go back to their overseas yeah. health care. So, you know, I really don't know what we're going to do unless maybe we vote them out and vote people in but and change mm -hmm. the constitution. But I don't see any change happening. And I'm sorry to be so pessimistic, but that's just the way I see it. Chuka. Yeah. We do what we can, and right now, we join our voices to yours on behalf of our health sector and health workers. We truly appreciate you and the daily sacrifices you make. Thank you. After the break, I'll be directing our attention to another aspect that is connected to our health. Some might say our mental and emotional health. Stay tuned. Honey, when taken in excess, becomes nauseating. You only need to ask someone who has binged on it to find out. I'm going to be talking about too close for comfort, the real test of COVID-19. While some are speaking of social distancing and the challenges associated with it, others are facing the strain of self-isolation, especially as we're poised, well, we're in the middle of the tunnel, um, which is called the extension to the original 14 days lockdown. I laughed when a friend said that the unspoken strain of coronavirus is a stress on relationships, on people who once had the luxury of time and space to themselves, but now are effectively on lockdown with family members. Hyperactive children, husbands getting to know their wives as if for the first time, and wives having to tolerate their restless husbands. As I write this, a friend informs me that there has been a spike in domestic violence across Europe. I have to admit, I'm a little shocked. It's certainly no laughing matter. I love my family, but I also love my space. Boy, do I love it. On this occasion, I say we have to find a way to have our cake and eat it for the sake of all our mental health. So here's my survivor's guide to self-family isolation. Accept that things are not the way they were and stop trying to make them otherwise. Embrace the uniqueness of this time, savoring the timelessness of the moment, such as by enjoying a longer than usual conversation with people you would ordinarily be too busy to chat with. Ask how they are and actually be pre prepared to find out. Lock out fear. Refuse to be the dumping ground for negative, recycled, fake, unverified news. Make time for yourself. A walk, sitting on the balcony, or even take longer than usual in the bathroom. Now is an opportune time for reflection, and out of reflection, discovery. I'm convinced that coronavirus will inadvertently open up new horizons. You know what they say about necessity being the mother of all inventions. Yeah, um, I love that. I love that part. Um, you know, fantastic tips on the, on uh, how to survive uh, these uh, the isolation. The isolation, especially mm. if you are not one to sit there in one place. But uh, um, I adopted um, an approach. In the mornings, I come out to jog. You know, we we'll have a, a Corona or quarantine group now who we'll, we'll jog and walk together, do aerobics. You know, not too many of us mm -hmm. do. Uh, just a few of us within the same, um, you know, compound and neighborhood. And thereafter, we'll sit down, maybe sometimes do breakfast together. A few meters apart. Yes. No, no, no. In the same, just we're friends in yeah, the yeah, same no, no, compound, you know, just about mm. two or three houses away. Mm. We'll do breakfast together and use the opportunity to catch up on old times, you know. And then before you know it, this afternoon, you go home, home refresh as if you're on break. Mm. And then, <laughs> you know, in the evening, we'll come back again. Would um, do a few walks around the estate. Thank God, um, I'm, uh, thanks to my estate people, the estate is tired now. So we we'll do a few walks around, and then just again. Before you know, it's nine, and so, and then you get back home. Sometimes watch one or two movies with my kids. So I just see it as, you know, holiday periods. Uh, and then also, I have always, uh, I'm used to walking from home. You know, once in a while, something I've, I've tried to practice. You know, when I started on my own, I actually started from home. And so it's not been too difficult for me to adapt, you know, just that there is no money, um, you know, no work, no money, and then um, you have to rely on a few friends. And there's so many barrage of requests from friends, relatives, 
you know, thinking, oh, this man that we see on free, TV, free, free you know, advice. he must have so much. <laughs> you know, so a lot of people, there are so many things you can do. I find that, like we always say, we have people say, oh, learn something, do something. Sometimes there is no mm -hmm. light even to yes. do something, to, to learn yeah. some of these things. Mm -hmm. But I also have adopted, like I said, adopt a village mentality where you go out in the community, village, sit under the tree, <laughs> five of you, you know, and then, you know, chat away. Enjoy the yeah. Retirement. I, 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 let, let me say, because yeah. I, I saw a tweet by someone um, advocating, oh, during this period, it's time for you to learn something new, write yeah. a book, <laughs> yeah, write you a know, book. do all of that. Good advice. Um, you know, and, and, and I think it was the, the, what's her name, J.K. Rowling, the Harry okay. Potter actor that, you know, retweeted and said, made a comment. And I 100% agree with her. Said some people just need to get through this period, a life. Yes. Yeah. So it's not a question of, yes, certain, no, no, no. Because don't put pressure on, on anyone, yeah. and which is what you're saying. It's yeah. so true. Because um, some people are not used to this situation. Yeah. Yes. And so asking them to, you know, um, start be fit, uh, develop six pack, it's just <laughs> totally, let's just get through this because this is, this is unprecedented. It's like a war the people, yeah, thing. The people who can, who, can, who can do those things, you know, um, start a book, start a new podcast, Brilliant. That's good for them. Mm. But a lot of people just need to get by the next day. Mm. And so the focus on mental health is actually very important. And, and, and your admonition in terms of, you know, don't allow yourself into negative spaces. Negative mental spaces is key because you see that a lot. Like, uh, you know, like uh, what would you say about uh, WhatsApp people? Because now you have so much time on their yeah. hands. Everybody's on the phone or on the no, internet. No, but if you go out to take a uh, walk. You no, take true. a walk with one or Leave, even with yeah. your children. Yeah. I agree. I take a walk so, now with so my it's, children. It's, it's finding ways yes. of just getting through this period, yeah. I think, is 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 Yeah. Is, is yeah. I I agree with Emeka for sure. And you know, I'll use myself as an example. Um, anyone who knows me knows that, you know, I love staying at home, I love my own company. You know, this, as far as I was concerned, I thought I'd been in training for it all my life <laughs> and that it was just going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But I'm sorry, <laughs> the first week, I have to tell you, I struggled because, again, I forgot the fact that I did everything out of choice. I wanted to stay at home. I wanted to spend time by myself. But now... It, it was like it's forced on me. So that affected my mental health for a bit. Um, I suddenly started feeling like the world was closing in on me, like there were doors, there were walls just coming up. So, just but, you know, to I'm able to stay positive. I'm able to think, uh, you know, uh, think outside those um, per perimeters. And so I was able to get myself back. But I do know somebody who's close to me who's struggling right now with this entire situation. I think the biggest, most important uh, area that we must you know, pay attention okay. to is mental health. Because I can see a lot of people are losing it. And uh, you know, people think that, oh, the staying at home is really only just about food. It's not just about food. It's about your mental health. And we need to address that. OK, so Chuka, in, in rounding up, because we're out of time, can you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, we need this time to decide what we're going to do next. It's, it's really important as a country, as a nation, to, to try to think about our future, no matter how difficult it is. You know, like Uche is talking about mental health issues, others who talk about hunger, boredom, everything. But we really need to think about Nigeria. Okay. I want to use the opportunity to reach out to single parents out there because these are indeed challenging times for them. And you are giving tips. And so for me, opportunity, find something you can do with your children. If it's take a walk, you know, if it's just go out, chat with neighbors, it can help take away that stress. Because it's easy when you have the father or mother, but when it's just the father or the, the mother, it's, it's, it's a bit tasking. So. We'll never tire of speaking, just as we hope you'll stay dogged in your desire to see a better society. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Together, we'll keep advocating for a better society, one conversation, one action at a time. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Five panelists. Five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. 
it's that greed it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage we're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat i would you know suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable there was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.